Hey everybody, Noble Records coming at you with another video. I'm Dylan from Noble Records. Um, hope you guys aren't getting sick of my videos, but I just had a lot going on lately. Hope you guys were able to check out my last video. I did an interview with my wife. It's an hour long, uh, but it kind of talks about just uh, everywhere we've been and how we got to where we are now and all that stuff. And how records play a role in our life. So check that out if you haven't already. But um, a few days ago, it was on Thursday. Today is, well, it's Tuesday now, but it's Monday. It's about 2.30 a.m. on Tuesday as I'm doing this. But um, I was getting some stuff ready for my pop-up this weekend. And so I thought before I let these go every which way, I would show you guys what I got. But anyways, on Thursday, uh, I went to a good buddy of mine's house. He's got the most insane record collection you've ever seen in your life. Tons of stuff. I always had stuff for sale and trade. And I had a bunch of stuff he wanted. He had a bunch of stuff I wanted. So we went and traded and I dug over there forever and I'm going to go back soon. But got some really, really cool stuff that I'm really excited about. So I thought I'd show you that really quick. Um, like I said before, this all this stuff got dispersed. What I'm not showing is I got a bunch of pretty common classic rock stuff like Led Zeppelin, uh, Queen, Bob Dylan, uh, a bunch of stuff like that that's just common that you've seen a thousand times before. I already priced that and put it in my stuff for this weekend's pop-up, so I don't even know where that's it. But this is the stuff, a lot of this stuff I'm keeping, I'm really excited about. Um, first of all, this Link Ray self-titled, it's autographed. Check that out. Pretty gnarly. Don't see that every day. Uh, when I saw this, I just was stricken. Love stricken. Had to have it. Uh, I have a copy of this album, but the face is cut off, so it's just a blank. It just has Link Ray. Um, so I've been wanting just a nice, clean copy uh, with the fold-out on it. And this is a really nice, clean copy, and it has his signature on it. So really, really cool. I mean, that's just, just coming out of the gate strong. Um, this is another one. This is a... And a listen. I don't mean to use the word grail too often. But I do it all the time. This is a grail for me. This is called Popo's Blues. Um, this is a white label promo. I'm not going to take it out, but I'll show it to you. White label promo of Popo's Blues. Popo's Blues was a killer um, blues rock band out of Argentina. Um, these original pressings are impossible to find. They reissued them. I would strongly recommend you go in and buy a reissue. The reissues are like 28 bucks on eBay. You can get them. Um, but this is an absolutely face-melting blues rock album. Unbelievable. I mean, you're going to hear this, and this album is going to be one of those, if you haven't heard it already, and you're going to think, where has this been my whole life? How have I lived this long without hearing this album? But it's called Popo's Blues, and this is just an absolute grail to find. Can't, couldn't believe I found it over there. He Well, he found it for me. He saved it for me because he knew I wanted it. He actually had two copies. Um, so, if that tells you anything. Uh, I got another Stooges self-titled. Um, this is going out to a good buddy of mine. Uh, this is a, I think this is a 1970 pressing with that Stooges script on the label. I talked about that in a few of my other videos, but anyways, this is a, the vinyl's in really good shape. Um, but a good friend of mine that just sends me VCLT all the time, um, you know, if you're watching, you know who you are. He sends me VCLT all the time, and he's been looking for this album, so this one's going out to him. Um, another one, this one I've actually already sold uh, to a friend of mine that's in S New Zealand, I think. Maybe Scotland. I don't know. Anyways, this is uh, one of those original U.S. Uh, misprint labels on the brown and purple. This one's actually a lot cleaner than mine. This is a really nice copy. But um, he'd been looking for a nice copy, and I was able to grab that one for him. Um, while we're talking about Led Zeppelin, this is an, a really cool, rare, inverted Houses of the Holy cover. I don't know if you guys have ever seen that before. Um, I've heard about them, I've seen pictures of them, but never seen one in real life. This is an Australian pressing. Um, vinyl is just a little bit different, and it is the same as the inner gatefold, but it is not a gatefold. And inverted so you know I'm a sucker for weird Led Zeppelin stuff so definitely keeping that one um, I'm on duel 2 Wolf Cry Wolf City sorry uh, Wolf City 
I'm on Duel 2. I just listened to this. It's the last thing I listened to. Uh, five minutes before doing this video. Really cool. Um, psyche proggy type deal. Um, this is one Hurdy Gurdy. Now you might know Hurdy Gurdy. Uh, it has a different cover. Um, and I don't know if that font will jog your memory a little bit. But Hurdy Gurdy is a really, really good psych album. Um, really good hard rock. Uh, just killer record. The, the original cover is not this. Um, it's like this alien looking creature and it says Hurdy Gurdy in this font on the cover. But uh, this is a reissue. Uh, the original Hurdy Gurdies are like five, six hundred bucks. So I uh, went ahead and when I found this reissue, I was happy, happy with that because the, the music is just killer. Hurdy Gurdy. Um, this one is one I have been looking for for a few years. I just hadn't seen it out in the wild. St. John Green. This is a um, just a killer psychedelic record. Look at that label. I mean, come on. Uh, but yeah, if you know the, the, the YouTube channel, shout out to Vinyl Fuzz. It's a kid that clicks psych. He's awesome. That's his profile picture is that label from St. John Green. This is a just a really good psych record. It's actually been a long time since I've heard it. But I remember hearing it and really liking it. It was on my want list. So finally, I mean, I mean, and just the cover alone. I mean, just come on, look at that. Psychedelic. Get out of here. Um, and then I'm trying to do this kind of in some sort of order. This is a really good Psyche Prog record. Uh, raw material. And unfortunately, this is not an original press. The original pressings of this are super rare and expensive. Uh, as you've probably seen the theme here. Uh, this is a reissue, but I'm happy to have a reissue. Um, it's one of those records that's really good. I really like it, but I don't know that I'd ever spring for an original. If I had an original, I probably would keep. I probably would sell it because you know it's worth so much. But so I'm happy with the reissue. Here's one that's not a reissue. This is Yardbirds Five Live. Um, this is an original New Zealand press or Australian. I think it's I think it's New Zealand. Yep, New Zealand. Colombian label, look at that. Really killer first pressing of this. Uh, it's one of those, it's hard to find. I've never seen one before. Uh, I've never held one in my hands. So, and as I'm a big Yardbirds freak, uh, just happy. I have that little Clapton. Little baby Clapton right there, just look at him. Ah, oh, so cute. Um, and let's see, this one. Oh! Now, when I see this album, it's called Stark Naked. Um, I don't think... Wow, I better be careful because this album might melt my face off. But this guy's face is melting. If you see him, he's screaming like, stop, it's too hot. And uh, that is right on point because this thing is a face melting killer a hard rock album. I love this. And I've been looking for this for a while. And he had one, and we made a deal. Uh, so you know how these things go. This is a really cool album. Okay, so that's just the cover. Uh, I believe you pronounce it Bodkin, B-O-D-K-I-N. Uh, that will be, I guess this would be the picture of the cover. The originals don't look anything like this. Uh, there, it's like a cartoon cover. But um, here's, like I'll take it out, and you can see it says Bodkin. This is uh, on A Karma, or as uh, he told me when I was over there, we were talking about things that I pronounced wrong on my videos, and he said that it's not A Karma, it's actually Akrama. And that makes sense, I guess. Akrama, A Karma. Don't know, but you guys know what I'm talking about. Uh, so that's the main one. That like This is the album cover, but it has this fold-out cover, just kind of like, you know how Black Moses does, Isaac Hayes. This one has this huge, insane fold-out cover. Um, anyways, a wolf and a, just a crazy... And I'm like, I don't know why I did this, because I'm never going to get it back like it was. Uh, tech helmet. Big mistake. There we go. There we go. It's right now. Everything's good in the hood. Uh, but yeah, this is uh, Bodkin, B-O-D-K-I-N. And it is another one of those really, really killer um, hard rock albums. Um, really good guitar work. Deep, heavy, a little psychedelic, but just deep hard rock. 
Really good stuff. Um, really like that. Uh, Bow Street Runners. This is one. Um, this is a reissue on Sundays with the green vinyl. Really good uh, psych album. Uh, I think he was telling me he had a sealed original copy of this. Uh, but yeah, these are expensive too, the originals. So I was happy with this, this reissue. <clears throat> this is a psychedelic record called The New Lords, or just New Lords rather, not The New Lords. Uh, this is a German pressing, I believe. This original German press on Columbia. It's got that really um, cool EMI jacket on it. Just the, you know, I'm sure in Germany that's not special. Yeah, printed in Germany. Uh, I'm sure that's not special. Like the UK jackets, how they kind of fold over at the top. I love that being, you know, from the U.S. But I've heard people from the U.K. say that they really like U.S. pressings. It's just grass is greener on the other side, I suppose. But this is a really cool um, psych album. I'm happy to have that. I've seen this around a little bit, but I've honestly never heard it. But it looks cool, and I'm excited to get it and put it on. Clarence Carter Patches. <sighs> Let me just tell you. As long as we're not talking about Stroke, because obviously Clarence Carter's best song is Stroke, or Stroking, I don't remember the name of it. Uh, that one tells the best story. But Patches is a close second. Uh, if you haven't heard Patches by Clarence Carter, go listen to the song. It will make you cry. My papa was a big old man. Oh my gosh. So good. So when I saw this, I mean, I pick up any Clarence Carter I see anyways, but... That's a really good one. What is this? Oh, this is a regular old copy of Zeppelin III. Nothing special, just regular old first pressing. Uh, this is um, a love record on MCA. Uh, there's a studio side. Well, this is a studio side. This is the live side. I've never seen this, but it appears to be some sort of compilation of studio and live tracks. But as I am a huge fan of Love, I'm sort of a completist that way. On just on a few bands, but Love is one of them that I absolutely love. This next one is one of those uh, original pressings are stupid expensive, like like, like I've been saying. But this is not a psych record. This is Nick Drake, Pink Moon. Um, this is one of one of my favorite records of all time. If we're being honest. If you've never heard of Nick Drake and you want to cut your teeth, Pink Moon's the place to start. Um, if you like newer acoustic folk music, this guy was way ahead of his time. Um, I uh, had a CD of this and I had it in the car the other day. And I asked my wife, I was like, when do you think this was recorded? And she said, well, either early 70s or like last year. I can't tell. And she was spot on. Um, this is just... A phenomenal record, but, and I wanted this to be a first pressing. I really did. If it was a first pressing, I probably couldn't have afforded it. But this is a 1978 pressing on the island. Uh, and this is probably, maybe as close as I'm going to get to an original for now, unless I get stupid lucky. Uh, Nick Drake's one of those artists that I don't care how much it's worth. If I found an original, I'll keep it. Uh, he is an amazing songwriter. Just, like I said, way ahead of his time. Huge impact on me. Um, just really great. I uh, can't say enough good things about that. But to be a 1978 UK Island pressing, um, I'm pretty happy with that. It was a great find. And then just my last finds video where I bought that collection, I found a copy of the Meters Fire on the Bayou on fire colored like orange and red colored vinyl. I was like, man, I don't know. I'm looking for original. I'd love to have original. Well, here you go, folks. Found an original. Um, this is one, actually, he found it for me. He pulled a lot of these out for me because he knew I was looking for them. Fire on the Bayou, the meters. This is a smoking funk. Just unbelievable. I mean, if you like stuff like Funkadelic and Maggot Brain and stuff like that, this, this is a great album. This is not quite as edgy as that, um, you know. But it's close. It's really good. Really good funk. Uh, let's see. Hawkwind Zones. Didn't have this. And I have an exhaustive Hawkwind collection. So pick that up. It's great. Haven't listened to it yet. Oh, no. Here's another. Uh, just I don't know why this is in there. I should have priced this already. But this is a Europe 72 Grateful Dead. Uh, it's a 
pretty good shape. Uh, need that one for my pop up. Oh, forgot about this one. This one is a nice clean copy of Silver Apples um, on cap. I've been looking for this one for a couple years. I know that it's an essential uh, and I just never found out in the wild. So he gave me a really good deal on this. Very excited. Happy to have that off my want list. Here's a cool one. If you're talking about weird Led Zeppelin pressings. I, said, I just said weird Led Zeppelin pressings. So this is, I believe, is it, uh, yeah, Brazil. Brazil pressing. Here's a label. Show you that. And then that's it. This is, uh, that's not the, you normally have a, a bit, well, here, I've got a first pressing. This is the first U.S. So this is the back cover of the first U.S. And this is the front cover. So this is the Brazilian. And I've seen this one here and there. Uh, they're kind of hard to find. I think they're even rare. Um, in Brazil, I'm not sure, but I just don't see them that much and when they do pop up on eBay They're kind of expensive. So um, I was happy to get this one. It's not in perfect shape, but hey love it um, and then this here is the Yardbirds um, This is a decent copy it's got some seam splitting, but um, Yeah, this is not one that I see very often over under sideways down um, Just great Killer Yardbird stuff. Uh, I think I think I might have all the Yardbird stuff now. I mean, for you know, within reason. Um, did I get this from him? I guess I did. Oh yeah, because I don't know if I have this or not. This, I'm getting in trouble here. It's Blues Magoos. I don't know if I have this or not. I think I do. Basic Blues Magoos. I don't know. I'll have to look. But Blues Magoos stuff is great. And I got that. If I don't have it already, I'll keep it. If I do have it, I will probably just have it pop up. So, um, I don't know why I'm fighting with this thing. Just stop. Uh, and then, got this other uh, Hawkwind. And my good buddy over at uh, Divine Barrel, I'm doing my next pop up. He's been looking for some Hawkwind. I already have this one. So, I'll probably be passing this one to him. Good buddy of mine that I dug at, he has been kind of holding some blue stuff for me. He has a great blues collection and a lot of stuff that he's willing to sell. Um, and he held on to these for me. Uh, we're so excited about these. This one's a Lightning Hopkins Lightning Strikes original pressing on VJ. You can eat off of it. So clean. So good. Can't wait to spin this one. I have been on quite the Lightning Hopkins kick here lately. Um, I've just gotten really lucky with some of his stuff. Uh, he's not an artist that I, I normally find much of. But, you know, as far as like early blues guys go, I guess that his, his stuff's sometimes a little easier to find for me. But, um... Anyways, I, I've always I'm always really looking for muddy water stuff, and don't seem to find it ever. Muddy Waters is my favorite blues man, but Lightning Hopkins is a close second. I love the way he sings and plays guitar. He's killer. Um, Blind Willie McTell, last session. This is on uh, Prestige Bluesville. That label, um, you know, pretty much anything on that label is going to be killer. But uh, yeah, it's him playing his 12 string man. I haven't heard this yet, but Really excited to listen to it. Um, I've heard him. I know him, so excited to hear that. Uh, Lonnie Johnson, Tears Don't Fall No More, Blues and Ballads. This is on Folkways. Um, and, man, I love Folkways stuff. I'm going to go ahead and just take all that stuff out. But um, it, it, Folkways always comes with, like, some sort of informational uh, pamphlet or flyer or something. Uh, I don't know what that's for. Uh, like, sometimes even I have some... Um, Woody Guthrie ones that have guitar chords and music and stuff with it. This one's just killer shape. Um, and, you know, a lot of folk waist pressings aren't worth a lot, but some of the blues ones are. Um, like, there's some Lightning Hopkins ones that are worth a good bit. Um, and they're, they're just regular little folk ways. Um, but, man, almost everything I've ever picked up on folk ways I've really liked. Uh, folk ways, the, the purpose of it is to be educational. 
Um, but man, just it's always great stuff. Always really interesting. Um, and also, this is um, gosh, there's a lot in here. This is a uh, Blind Willie Johnson. Uh, his story told. Uh, documented by Samuel Charters, Louisiana, Texas. Um, anyways, there must be a book or something here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump into it. But um, Blind Willie Johnson, love him. Got a couple records, like compilations and stuff from him. That's just the record. I, should, I guess I can show you the way it pull. Gosh, it's packed in there tight. Hold on, hold on. Good Lord, it's packed tight. It's got a bunch of stuff in it. So yeah, like I said, with Folkways, um, sometimes when you find them, they don't always have this stuff in still inside, but um, the, there's still the resources are still available if you contact the right people. Um, I don't know which museum it is, but there's a museum that has like a backlog of all their materials that you can order um, if they're not inside here. But oh gosh, I can't get it out. Lord of mercy, it's packed tight in there. Well, I'm gonna have to get that out because. There we go. Um, yeah, so it's, it's, it's almost like a gatefold, but there's no gatefold. It's just got two separate compartments. And that's normal for Folkways. That has that sometimes, but it has the educational packet and then the record. But man, that's some heavy, thick vinyl. Holy moly. Feels like a 200 gram. 200 grammer! <laughs> and then uh, Blues in My Ball, Light and Hopkins. This is a um, reissue. You know how jazz, the jazz records have the OJC. This has got the OBC, um, you know, prestige reissue. But, yeah, just killer. Light and Hopkins luck here lately. So, I want to show you guys that. I hope you guys enjoyed seeing that. Um, there will be more to come. I'm going back over to dig at his house tomorrow night. Which, I guess, will be tonight now that I'm talking. And it's like 3 a.m. So, um, wish me luck. I'm going to be looking for some more stuff for the pop-up. Listen, guys, all seriousness. If you are in or around the Charlotte area on Saturday, June 8th, this Saturday from 12 to 4, please come to my pop-up. Because if you don't, you're going to be mad that you missed it. And I, I've warned you. Uh, I am, we're moving here shortly, you know, within the next six months or so. And uh, really trying to get my crap together uh, and sell a bunch of stuff really making some tough decisions on what I'm actually going to listen to and stuff that are just okay. I want it to be all killer, no filler in my collection. And so I'm, I'm, I'm getting rid of a lot of stuff that's, you know, for me, that might not blow my socks off, but for other people it does. So, um, yeah, a lot of stuff I didn't think I'd ever get rid of. Like I'm, I'm getting rid of some grunge stuff. Um, getting rid, just a ton of stuff. I've got like five or six crates I've already pulled out, um, of my collection. So don't miss that. Uh, this Saturday, June 8th, from 12 to 4, Divine Barrel Brewing in Charlotte. Uh, it's going to be a real good time. A lot, of, a lot of people there, and just a lot of fun hanging out, talking about records. So, see you there. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you next time. Oh, and if you haven't seen the video that I just posted of me and my wife, I mean, interviewing my wife, watch it. It's really good. You get to know us a lot better. You get to know me a lot better, and gets to, you probably don't know her at all, so... Anyways, I'm babbling on. See you guys next time.